A lot of Gamescom trailers, a lot of Gamescom demos give you a lot of bang for your buck. You see a lot of explosions, a lot of shooting. Dishonored did it slightly differently. You guys dropped us all into a high society party. As I was saying to someone yesterday, it's a murder mystery. The twist is you're the murderer and you have to find the mystery is who your target is. Right. Yeah, the, uh, uh, we came with two missions. Uh, the one you're talking about is called Lady Boyle's Last Party. and. Uh, in it, you have a high-profile target who is a, a corrupt, aristocratic woman who is funding the military for the tyrant, the Lord Regent. Uh, she's also romantically linked to him. Uh, so you get sent to, uh, as you're taking down the Lord Regent's allies, you get sent to take out Lady Boyle. However, then you realize that there are three women in the family called Lady Boyle, the three sisters. And so you can approach the mission uh, you, in, you enter the estate district by riding in a boat with Samuel Beechworth, your, your boatman. And the outer areas are all dila uh, dilapidated because the, the plague has killed half the population in the city and it's hostile. But once you get into the party, because Corvo wears a mask, you're accepted as a guest. So then you can either slaughter the party if that's what you choose to do, or you can like wander around in the restricted areas, read journal notes, like look at paintings, like try to overhear conversations, gather clues to figure out which of the Boyle women is actually funding the military for the Lord Regent. And we were talking just before we started the interview here, you, you had the chance to stand and watch people play this, and you find it very interesting seeing how people approach this. Yeah, Dishonored is always really interesting because we have, you know, uh, you know, writers use that term, the ideal reader, right? This person really gets me. Um, and Raf and I, the co-creative director, and all the guys at Arcane, we're very passionate about this blend of first-person shooter and RPG, right, with stealth and simulation. And so when we, we know when we are talking to someone or watching someone play who's kind of like our ideal player, uh, and it's a pleasure, it's a joy, but it's also interesting to watch people who don't normally play this type of game. Maybe never even played Deus Ex, never played Thief, never played Bioshock or Stalker. Maybe they're only familiar with, uh, you know, more scripted games or traditional games. And so watching them is interesting too. You know, some people slaughter their way through a room full of people that would have just asked them for, ask him for a drink or, you know, like, talk to him. Uh, in other cases, they don't use stealth or they do. They don't realize they can get up on the rooftop, they just go down the street because that's what other games have trained them to do. So it's, we learn something every time we watch people play. Does it feel like you really have to break the mold here? Or you have to break people's belief that this is how these games should be played? It's kind of a re-education process and uh, with some players there's this light bulb moment, you know, where the guy's standing there, he's looking down the street, he sees some guards, he's low on health so he doesn't want to approach the guards. He doesn't see what else he can do, and then you see the player kind of like look over into the water and see some fish swimming around, and he brings up the, the power wheel and cycles through the power and stops on possession, and you kind of go like, oh, this guy might have heard that you can possess fish in the game, and, and then he possesses the fish and, uh, you know, magically like merges with the body of the fish, so now he can swim through a little tunnel and enter the house from below, and uh, you see him just sit back and, and laugh, you know, in, in a good way, and it's... And it's like, that's a super pleasurable moment, really. Like, With entering the estate, do you guys, how, how many different ways are there to enter the estate? Do you actually have a number you give me? Well, all the missions are a little different. We, we Raf and I have this saying, like, which is like, break the patterns. Don't, don't have too many patterns, right? Like, in gameplay, you want patterns so people get familiar, and then you can, like, add complexity to the pattern, etc. But in fiction, uh, and in setting, you kind of want to break the pattern, so it's not the same thing over and over. So it's hard to say from mission to mission, um, but certainly in the case of the Boyle party, uh, there's an invitation you can find, there's an invitation you can steal in a previous mission, uh, you can possess a rat and enter a little tunnel, there's actually a, a way through the river if you swim and explore. Uh, so you can walk in the front door with an invitation, you can also go around behind some buildings behind and go out a window and into a, over a wall basically. So. I don't know. I mean, in that case, there's there's probably six or seven, you know, ways to enter. Okay, so it's just 
as I said to you before the interview, we were discussing it with so many people who had played it yesterday, and every single one had come up with something different. And we're like, didn't Great. didn't realize this? Oh, you could do that. And it's really nice to have that. And that's each stage, like you said, it's entering the state, trying to get upstairs to search the bedroom right. and work out, like you said, who Lady Boy like, or the Lady Boy that you have to kill. And one thing I need to talk about it is the design. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous game, and the design of every single room in that mansion was fantastic. How do you guys, or what, what sort of inspiration have you drawn from to get that looking as well as it does? Well, part of me is always tempted to, uh, hoping that some team member of mine is going to be watching this eventually. Part of my, uh, I'm always tempted to say, well, Raf and I just opened up Maya and we began to learn it and we learned Photoshop and, you know, we, we sort of tweaked the lighting, and, but that's not true at all. We don't have anything to do with that. The truth there is that uh, we have, Arcane has one of the most brilliant art teams I've ever even heard about, like the, certainly the best one I've worked with. Uh, Sebastian Miton is our art director. He is fantastic. Uh, Victor Antonoff is our visual design director. They work as a team and Sebastian's art team is really, really talented. We have Damien Laurent, who is a fantastic uh, architect with a really eye for, for flair. And our lighting guys are fantastic. And so they do things that we just can't believe. And so this mission in particular, Raf and I planned this with our lead designer, Christoph Carrier, and uh, a des the designer of the mission, Anthony Husso, who was the winner of the Golden Hammer for Thief. He's a, he's a Thief mod guy originally. We all got together and said, you know what would be great is a costume ball where you have to move around and one of the three sisters is, is the right woman. And uh, then we you know, worked with the artists a little bit and Sebastian and, and Victor took over. And it's just one piece at a time. Uh, Anthony working with Damien Laurent and, and the, uh, I can't remember the specific architect's name on the mission, but uh, that team of people, uh, they're, you know, they're fantastic. And it's just a collaborative effort between those guys. And we back up and look at it, and you know, when we first talked about it, oh, it's, a, it's an ornate costume party. The, the point here is that in the middle of a plague that has killed half the population and that is completely a horror to the common people, the aristocrats are eating caviar and throwing a big costume ball and, and profiting from the plague. And uh, so this is kind of grotesque in a way, but it's beautiful grotesque. And um, I just can't give those guys enough credit for their, their artwork and their design. And, uh, all of it together, you know. And you, you sort of saying about grotesque, there's certainly some of the conversations I overheard while I was eavesdropping were quite uncomfortable yeah. listening to, but you, you want to instill that sort of feeling to the player that this is, yeah. Yeah, Dishonored takes place in a grim world, I have to say. Like, it's, uh, it's beautiful at times, but it's dark. It's like a moving painting at times. You go across the river and you see the moon and a tower in the distance. It's really pretty, but it's also grim. And uh, there's definitely a feeling of exploitation and every man for himself and the plague bringing out the worst in people. Uh, we worked with Austin Grossman, uh, the you know, game designer who worked on System Shock and games like that. Uh, he also wrote the novel Soon I Will Be Invincible. It's a supervillain novel, it's great. And he has a real ear for uh, wit and also for class struggle and, uh, you know, and, and he also like can cut you straight to the bone with something grim or uh, savage. And so it's just this weird mixture. And uh, we, uh, Raf and I worked very closely with him. And uh, also Terry Brosius was also one of our writers. And all the level designers contributed to that. Christoph Carrier and Anthony Husso contributed to that. So the party is full of lines uh, that make you want to hate the people there or, you know, uh, realize the larger sense of what's going on. And does that sort of vindicate your actions in the game as you're playing it? Because you almost feel like, yeah, these people deserve to die. Well, that's one of the things about Dishonored is you can finish the game without killing anyone, without killing a single person. And so if you do kill people, it's on you. It's that you're culpable, right? At the same time, we dangle that in front of you all the time. These are bad people. Like, Lady Boyle is not a, a nice person. You get the sense that she has... Uh, she's not only, like... A corrupt, from a corrupt aristocratic family and some of the aristocratic families in the game you find out by listening that some of them own slave mines for silver uh, you know they they make some of their profit by butchering whales and, and selling the oil um, they're all they're all incredibly decadent in the middle of a time when other people are starving you know so it is true that they're 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 bad people in general you know they're funding, they're funding a, a tyrannical military that has a uh, martial law ac across the city, right? So, uh, but at the end of the day, we do also offer you a way besides just killing to, to solve the problem, so. Yeah.